This is section 4.2, factors and simplest form. When we talk about factors, we have two different types. So we're splitting our whole numbers into two different types of numbers. First of all, prime numbers. A prime number has only a factor of one in itself. Here are the first few prime numbers, two, three, five, seven, 11, and so on. So for any of these numbers, for example, for 11, the only numbers that multiply to give you 11 are 1 and 11. On the other hand, a composite number is a natural number greater than 1 that's not prime. So some examples of composite numbers would be 4, because 4 is 2 times 2. It does have factors besides just itself and 1. And notice that the number 1 is neither prime nor composite. So when we talk about the prime factorization of a number, this means that we're expressing the number as a product of its factors. And those factors must be prime numbers. Every whole number greater than one has just one prime factorization. For example, if we take the number 12, we can write its prime factorization as two times two times three. And notice here that two is prime, two is prime, and three is prime. So two and three are prime factors of 12, because they're both prime numbers and they both divide evenly into 12. And remember that a factor is any number that divides a number evenly. If you divide 12 by two, for example, you get a remainder of zero. So let's try writing the prime factorization of some of these numbers. There are a few ways to do this. One way that a lot of people find helpful is to do a factor tree. So if we take our number 30 and then Think of any two numbers that you can multiply together to get 30. For example, 5 and 6. So 5 times 6 is equal to 30. Then go through and look at each of the numbers in this level of your factor tree and see if they have any other factors. So 5 is prime. So we're done with that one. So let's just do a line down here. But 6, we could still write as 2 times 3. Now, both 2 and 3 are prime, so that means that all the numbers in this line of our tree are prime. So that means our prime factorization of 30 is 5 times 2 times 3. And notice that we could write this in any order we wanted to. We could write our prime factors in order from smallest to greatest. So we could write this as 2 times 3 times 5. But both of these mean the same thing. OK, let's try 75. So if we think of two numbers that we can multiply to get 75, let's do 25 times 3. 25 we can break down again, since 25 is 5 times 5. 3 is prime. So let's just carry it down. And now we have all three of these numbers being prime. So that means our prime factorization, we can write as 5 times 5 times 3. Now the common way to write this if you have more than one of the same factor is to use an exponent. So since 5 times 5 is the same as 5 squared, You'd usually see this written as 5 squared times 3 or 3 times 5 squared, either way. Finally, let's do 170. Now with this one, since it has a 0 on the end, we would know it would be divisible by 10. So right away we would know that that would be a factor. So we could write this as 10 times 17. Okay, 10 is a composite number since we can write it as 2 times 5. 17 is one of the prime numbers. The only factors of 17 are 1 and 17. So we can carry that one down there. So that means our prime factorization of 170 is 2 times 5 times 17. Here's some divisibility tests that you can use if you're trying to figure out how to write the prime factorization of a number. The first one is that numbers divisible by 2 
if its last digit is 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. So this is just if it's an even number. So for example, if we look at 196, we know it's divisible by 2 because the last digit is 6. The rule for 3 is that a number is divisible by 3 if you can add up its digits and get a number that's divisible by 3. So for example, if you add up the digits and get 6, 6 is divisible by 3. Or if you add up the, the digits and get 12, 12 is divisible by 3. Well, if we look at the number 117, if we add up the digits here, 1 plus 1 plus 7 is going to give us 9. 9 is divisible by 3, so that means 117 is divisible by 3. A number is divisible by 5 if the last digit is either a 0 or a 5. So for example, 2,345 is divisible by 5. And as we saw in the last example, a number is divisible by 10 if its last digit is 0. The number 8,470 is divisible by 10 because that last digit is 0. Now we're going to look at equivalent fractions. We're going to look at two different fractions that actually have the same value. And the way we'll see this is by graphing them on the number line. We're going to start by graphing 3 fourths on the number line. So here's our number line going from 0 to 1. And remember to graph a fraction like this, we divide our distance from 0 to 1 into as many equal parts as we have in the denominator. So if we divide this into four equal parts, one of these parts is 1 fourth. If we want 3 fourths, then we just count three of these parts over, and there's our 3 fourths. Now if we graph 6 eighths on the same number line, we would do the same thing. So now we would just divide from 0 to 1 up into 8 equal parts. So each of these parts is 1 8 And then if we count over 6 of those, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we get to the same spot as where we were with our 3 fourths. So there's our 6 eighths. If we do that, if we have two fractions that represent the same part of a whole or are the same point on the number line, then they're called equivalent fractions. So what we just saw is that 3 fourths and 6 eighths are equivalent fractions because when we graphed them, they ended up at the same point on the number line. The fundamental property of fractions says that two fractions are equal to each other if you either multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the same number, or if you divide the numerator and denominator by the same number. And what this says is that these two fractions are equivalent, and these two fractions are equivalent. So let's look at some examples. If we wanted to write a fraction that's equivalent to 2 thirds, we would just have to decide what to multiply the numerator and denominator by. So for example, if we decided to multiply both the numerator and denominator by 5, then we would end up with 10 over 15. And that means these two are equivalent. Now let's look at 16 over 22. We could either multiply or divide our numerator and denominator by the same number to get an equivalent fraction. Let's divide this time. If you notice, both 16 and 22 are divisible by 2. They're even. So if we divided each one of these by 2, that would give us an equivalent fraction, and we would end up with 8 over 11. So that means that 16 over 22 and 8 over 11 are equivalent. The way we're going to use this is to write fractions in their simplest form, or we can also call it in lowest terms. So if we started out with the fraction 14 over 21, 
since both 14 and 21 are multiples of 7, we could divide both the numerator and the denominator by 7 and get an equivalent fraction. So that would give us 2 thirds. Since 2 and 3 don't have any factors in common, then that means that this fraction is in simplest form or in lowest terms. So another way we can think about doing this is to write the prime factorization of both the numerator and denominator. If we write the prime factorization of 14, we get 7 times 2. The prime factorization of 21 is 7 times 3. That tells us that 7 is a factor of both of them, and that, that means that this would be equivalent to 2 thirds. That's just two different ways to think about doing the same thing. So the way we want to do this, if we're trying to write a fraction in simplest form, is to find the prime factorization of the numerator, find the prime factorization of the denominator, and then divide out all of our common factors. And we call this writing the fraction in simplest form or just simplifying the fraction. Let's look at 10 sixteenths. So if we write the prime factorization of 10, it would be 2 times 5, since both 2 and 5 are prime. Then for 16, if we go over here and figure out the prime factorization, 16 is 2 times 8. 2 is prime, so we can carry that down. 8 is 2 times 4. So now we have 2 times 2, and then 4 is 2 times 2. So our prime factorization of 16 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So what we can do is look for factors that are in common. Since there's a 2 in both the numerator and the denominator, we're just going to divide, to divide that 2 out so we can just cross it out. And notice that we can only cross out one 2 in the denominator because we only had one in the numerator. So what we're left with is 5 over 2 times 2 times 2. And then we would want to go ahead and multiply our denominator back out, so this would end up being 5 eighths. So 5 eighths would be the simplest form for 10 sixteenths. Let's look at 6 fifteenths. Again, if we write the prime factorization of 6, that would be 2 times 3. Our prime factorization of 15 would be 3 times 5. Now we're looking for factors in common for, between the numerator and the denominator. So we have 3 as a factor in common. So again, we can just cross that out. And what we have left is 2 over 5. So our equivalent fraction in simplest form is 2 fifths. Remember when you're doing this that if you have a factor in either the numerator or the denominator that gets divided out and there's no factor left, then you still have a 1 there. So here, if we wrote our prime factorization of 10, it would be 5 times 2, then if we cancel the 5 on the top and the bottom, we do still have a 1 here. And the same way if we end up with a 1 in the denominator, for example in this one, if we cancel the 3 from both the numerator and the denominator, we end up with a 1 on the bottom. Now remember if, now remember if you end up with a number over 1, that's the same as the whole number. So 5 over 1 is equal to 5. Let's simplify some of these. So for 36 over 63, we need to find the prime factorization of 36. So 36 is 6 times 6, and then 6 is 2 times 3. So we end up with 2 times 3 times 2 times 3, and 63 is 7 times 9. The 7 is prime, and the 9 we can write as 3 times 3. And remember, when you find your prime factorization, you can change the order of these numbers if you want to. So if we wanted to put these in order from smallest to largest, we could write this as 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. And then on the bottom we have 3 times 3 times 7. 
Now we're looking for any factors in common between the numerator and denominator. So notice in each place we have two factors of three. So we can cancel out, oops, we can cancel out that three and we can cancel out that three. So what we have left is two times two over seven. There are no more common factors left, so our simplest form is four sevenths. All right, for this one, we have a negative value. So all we're going to do is just leave that negative on the outside. So we can figure out our prime factorization of 12. 12 is four times three. So that ends up being two times two times three. And our prime factorization of 42. 42 is six times seven. 6 is 2 times 3, and then we carry the 7 down since it's prime. So we're going to still have this negative on the top. And then our prime factorization of 12 was 2 times 2 times 3. And on the bottom, we have 2 times 3 times 7. So what can we cancel out? We can cancel one of these 2s. And we can cancel a three from each place. Now we still have the negative in front, so on the top we have negative two, and on the bottom all we have left is seven. Now with fractions, if you have a negative sign, it can actually go any of three places. So we could leave it in the numerator with the two, we could actually move it down to the denominator with the seven if we wanted to, or we could just write it out in front of the whole fraction. So you could either write this as negative two over seven, or you could write the whole fraction as negative two sevenths. Let's look at 11 thirty-fourths. 11 is prime, so we don't have to do anything to get our prime factorization of that. 34, we know it's even because it ends in a four. So if we divide 34 by two, we get two times 17. Two and 17 are both prime, so that gives us our prime factorization of two times 17. So we have three prime numbers here, and we have no factors in common, which means that our simplest form is the number that, our simplest form is the fraction that in the form that we already had. 11 thirty-fourths. And finally, let's look at 30 eightieths. So 30 we can write as 5 times 6. 6 is 2 times 3. So we have our prime factorization for 30. And for 80, notice that both of these we know are divisible by 10 because they end in 0. So sometimes that makes it easier to find our prime factorization. 10 is 2 times 5. 8 is 2 times 4. And we still have to go one more step because the 4 is not prime. So now we have 2 times 5 times 2 times 2 times 2. Again, I'm writing our prime factorizations in order from smallest to greatest, but that's not something you absolutely have to do. Also notice that I'm not writing these with the exponential notation. In problems like this, it's really better to have your prime factors separated out so that you can see what to cancel. In this one, we can cancel a two from the top and the bottom. And we also have a five in common, so we can cancel the fives. What we have left is three on the top and two times two times two on the bottom. And that gives us three eighths.